The Misty Moors of England hold many secrets, and some of these secrets are best left uncovered. Is this the case for the excavation of Hobbs Barrow? Hey guys and welcome to Yak Wax Lips. My name is Michael, your point and click adventurer, and today we are uncovering the excavation of Hobbs Barrow from Cloak and Dagger Games. But before we pick up that axe, I create purely adventure game videos, so if you like to point and dig, sorry, point and click, then be sure to do so over the like, hit subscribe for more and turn on the bell so you don't miss out on any of my adventure game videos. The excavation of Hobbs Barrow was a surprise addition to the Wadjetai catalogue, with the studio deciding to recently add its weight behind it and publish it. Originally entitled Incantamentum, the game fits into Wadjetai's brand of small yet highly story-driven games. The developers Cloak & Dagger Games themselves are the team behind the critical hits football game and Sumatra. So Hobbs Barrow is on one hand highly anticipated, yet on the other also seems to fly under the radar. The story of a young woman going round the country digging up dirt is not one that's too sexy, which to me is why the title might have changed. Incantamentum is a confusing, unmemorable one, whilst the excavation of Hobbs Barrow already has you asking questions. So the game. Normally I delve into each aspect and give you my thoughts at the end, but I'm doing it differently here. This game is brilliant, in capital letters. What do you want? I understand Hobbs Barrow is located on your land. Who are you? Clear off from me farm, lass. This is private land. The plot revolves around Thomasina Bateman, a barrow digger, who's travelling up to the moors from London to uncover a barrow thanks to an invitation by one Leonard Shoulder. A barrow, explained early on, is a large mound of earth that houses a tomb, possibly, often filled with relics and artefacts. Thomasina is on a mission to write the book on the matter and so is visiting as many as she can. Off the back of a few letters from Mr Shoulder, she departs a train to this small tiny hamlet of a village in the middle of the unsettling cold and rainy moors in the hope of learning more about this particular barrow. The locals on the other hand aren't keen on outsiders and deflect obstruct, deny and flat out refuse to be part of it. And thus, herein lies the plot. What is Hobbs Barrow? Why is it so secret? And what does her past have to do with it? How dare you! The village of Bewley we step out into immediately conveys isolation. A patchy row of stone houses, mist and wind surrounds us, with hills and fields as far as the eye can see. With no way in or out except for the daily train, it's a setting that's queued up for a mystery. Thomasina is a strong lead and with the time period setting of around the turn of the 19th century, she's an unusual individual. A woman alone, not due to be wed, and God forbid wanting nothing more than to dig up dirt. She's very polite and rarely gets angry, even when verbally accosted by some unpleasant locals. And it's all been learned from her barrow digging father. Ah, the unmistakable charm of old Cyril. She's a persistent yet fair woman. Although some locals of Bewley want nothing to do with her, there are a few who welcome her in kindly. Throughout, Thomasina builds a rapport with a few locals such as Father Roach, the landlord Mr Kemp and the town drunk Mr Tillett. For the most part though, we're kept at arm's length from the community. As I said, we're isolated in this rural place and our location plays a part almost like a character. It's forever misty and dark lands quickly. There are a smattering of animals both wild and domesticated. I fell in love with this place. 
the solitude a dreamlike setting from the thick wooded area to the large dominating church and grounds. It's all perfectly captured in both sound and visuals. The art here is terrific with muted tones of greens, greys and blues that truly depict the dank, wet, emptiness of the moors. Wind continuously plays whilst walking in the open spaces and rain spatters the ground. The mystery of Hobbs Barrow is further added to with the minimal music on offer. When it gets truly dark, there's more of a drone than melody, an anxious wail that urges you to find safety. This is an adventure game, but it plays a little bit like a novel. There is a lot of story to unfold, and for the majority, it's all unravelled in the conversations we have. At some large plot points, we're treated to several minutes of dialogue, if you're not tuned in 100%, then there may be some story beats you'll miss, but it's all laid out in a slow, meaningful way, rather than a huge info dump. We do hold an inventory of items, and these are a vital source. Not only do we have the obligatory knife, which comes in handy more than once, we have puzzles here that utilize a diary, and a few combination puzzles where we use a few items together. For the majority of the game, the puzzles lie on the easier side, and the only criticism I can throw at it is that around two thirds in, there are perhaps one or two too many fetch quests, such as getting the right type of flower or hunting down some cakes. It does deviate a little away from the main story. But this alone is the only negative I can think of in the entire game. Our inventory is kept out of sight at the top in a drop down menu. We only usually carry around half a dozen things so it never gets overwhelming and once something has its use it generally just breaks, meaning we leave it behind and it exits our inventory. It's a simple mechanic of left clicking to use or interact and right click to look at. One thing that Wadjetai have brought to the table is voice talent. Thomasina is perfectly cast with Samantha Bayart taking on the role. Her London dialect contrasts fantastically with the northern vocabulary of the rest of the cast. What can you tell me about Bewley? Well, it used to be a thriving village. Not so much now. I don't spend much time there these days. Are you local? Ah, yes, a local I am. But I don't live in the village. The northern vocabulary is wonderfully realised by the rest of the cast. It lends the game an ever more located space. This is definitely on the moors. Another highlight for me is the writing. Lines spark with historical weight that lends them an authentic feel and the predominantly male cast have no problem diving deep into their frankness. Words like folly and curses pepper the conversation and the words of Thomasina come across as a well-educated woman, increasing her roundedness as a character. If you didn't think it could get any better, then even the save slots make me happy. There are what seems like an infinite amount of slots, plus an autosave. The cherry on the cake though is that it completely follows through, with a promise of a substantial ending that just doesn't wilt away. Hours after I finished the game, I was thinking of it. I could wax lyrical even more about how this game is brilliant, but I'll just leave it with this. The excavation of Hobbs Barrow is not just a game of the year contender, it's a game of the decade one. I urge you right now to go and get a copy on PC, Linux or Mac. If you're getting it for PC, it's available for Steam and GOG and shortly on Humble. I'll leave all the links down below for you. If you do buy it from GOG, I do get a small commission as an affiliate, so nudge nudge wink wink. Thank you very much to Wadjetai Games for a review copy of the game and thank you to you for listening to this review. If you've enjoyed it, then please consider supporting me over on Patreon. And please, of course, let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Until next time, have a wonderful morning, afternoon or evening, whatever it is you're doing right now, and take care.